Hello and welcome to this James Bike Guy where today we're getting to take a look at the rowdy version of Specialized Cross Country Race Bike. In fact, you might even call this a down country bike. And we'll get into what that means, what this bike is all about as we get further in. But without further ado, this is the 2022 Specialized Epic Evo Expert. And you might be asking yourself, what the heck is an Epic Evo Expert? That's a bunch of words for the bike that is right in front of us here. So, Specialized has their Epic series, and the Epic is the winningest XC race bike nameplate. This bike has been around quite a long time in several different generations, and from World Cups to local XC races, it'll be one of the most popular bikes that you see at a race day. And part of those reasons have always been that it's combined the ability to have good performing front suspension as well as rear suspension that almost acts like an XC hardtail. And in fact, on the non-Evo version, the standard variant, which is a race bike with 100 mils of front travel and 100 millimeter of rear, it runs something called a brain in both the front and the rear that allows the bike to control automatically whether or not the shocks are open or closed. You know, on a lot of bikes, you'll often see that they've got some lever on the handlebar that you've got to flip or turn on or off, or on a bike like this where it's got a lever on the fork leg that you have to close to be able to stiffen up. The standard Epic has that happen automatically, giving it a huge advantage on XC race days because it acts like a hardtail until it needs to be a full suspension but the bike in front of us here is for that racer that maybe wants something a little more lively and a little more playful, or potentially a rider that's looking for the lightest weight way to have a ton of fun. And that's what this bike is. So if the standard bike is 100 mils of front and rear travel, this bike is now rocking 120 millimeters of front suspension through this RockShox SID fork. And then out back, it's got revised linkage, slightly different shock. And here we've got 110 millimeters of suspension travel. And unlike the XC race version, the Evo version omits the brain both in the front and the rear so that the bike feels active like a traditional trail bike. So it's taking some of that XC performance and making it a bit more fun and a bit more lively for a pretty cool bike. Now, we've seen this from a few other manufacturers. Most notably, Santa Cruz has their Blur, which has been their XC race bike. And then they also have their Blur TR, the trail version or a longer travel version. And in fact, I've owned that Blur TR and I found it to be really fun. And it's pretty cool that Specialized came out a couple years ago with a bike to compete directly against that. Now, a few more things to mention before we go on to the parts and specs of this bike. The geometry on it is gonna be updated. So here we've got a 66 and a half degree head tube angle and a 74.5 degree seat tube angle rocking a chainstay length of 438 millimeters. Now compared to the standard bike, the chainstay is five millimeters longer and we have a head tube and seat tube that are one degree slacker compared to that standard bike which means that this should descend better. The bottom bracket's actually a touch higher too, which is gonna make it maneuver quite a bit nicer. And in fact, all these Epics come with a 11M carbon frame. So you can't quite see the branding underneath that SWAT cage we'll get into in a bit, but this is a full carbon fiber frame front end as well as rear end of the bike. And it's the same frame that you'd get on the S-Works version. So this being an expert, this means this is middle of the road in the carbon fiber lineup, which is the only frame material the bike comes in. And then they have their top end variant, the S-Works, which has the same frame, but of course, quite a bit nicer parts. And on that note, I think it's time that we start checking out the parts on this expert version. And to first dive in with the expert version, let's talk about the suspension componentry. So this bike, of course, being a 29er with 29 inch wheels, has the RockShox SID front fork, which features the Debon Air air spring. So of course, it's air adjustable to your weight and your riding style, which is great to see. And then on the other side, this RockShox SID fork rocks the Charger damper. 
Now this damper originally came out on their pikes. They're more aggressive forks, but this is the Charger 2 RL damper, which means you've got rebound adjust down here on the bottom, and then you do have compression adjust, which is infinite from open to close. So there are two specific detents for open and closed, but anywhere in between will adjust how that fork feels. Now going to the back is the Sid Lux Air. Now this is the Select Plus version of this rear shock. It is a metric size with 190 millimeter eye to eye and a 40 mil stroke. And then you'll see it has a spot where you can do a high and a low position on our yoke here. So just down below, there's a little bolt that you're able to adjust from two different positions to be able to slacken the head tube and the seat tube by a half a degree. So that's pretty cool to see. And then that drives through the suspension to this modified single pivot. So by modified, this rocks a flex stay. And how the suspension works is the seat stay here has some flex in it, allowing the suspension to drive through that linkage for the 110 millimeters of suspension out back, but still only has one physical pivot up front. That allows some very good anti-squat capabilities, but it's also still going to allow for good bump compliance and energy transfer through the bike, smoothing out some of those bumps without the anti-rise brake jack issues that older single pivots used to have. And while we're back here, we'll see the 1x12 SRAM X01 drivetrain. So this has a X01 Eagle rear derailleur which what that derailleur does is that operates an 11 to 52 tooth rear cassette, so 520% range, and then it drives forward to this aluminum SRAM crank going through a threaded bottom bracket and a 32 tooth narrow wide chain ring. This has the Eagle chain ring technology, which is basically a pretty neat shaped narrow wide to allow the bike not to have to run a chain guide up front and keep the chain from bouncing off. You'll see that the shifting is courtesy of a SRAM X01 shifter. So thumb button to go to easier gear, thumb button in front to go to harder gear. And one of the things I really like about these X01 shifters is that bolt right there allows you to adjust where this paddle is. Now, oftentimes when you're getting everything set up on the handlebar, this can sort of be in the way or not feel perfect on like the GX versions or below. So it's cool that you can dial that in and make the fit even better. Now, speaking of fit, it integrates into the SRAM G2 brakes. Now the G2 brake, this is the RS version, which means we have a reach and stroke adjust. It's clamping down on four piston calipers, both on the front and the rear. And we'll see those rotors mount up to some DT Swiss hubs on the front as well as the back with the Roval control carbon rims. Now this carbon rim is lightweight and very strong. It utilizes a hookless profile. And one of the things I really like is it's got this extra bead of carbon or buildup of carbon there for rim protection. So when you're running low tire pressure, you're able to have a little extra strength there, which is really supportive for the tire, as well as strength for the rim with 29 millimeters of internal width. And the rear hub is a DT Swiss 350, which means this has a 350 ratchet mechanism, which is a super reliable, super strong hub setup. Now, the last things to talk about, of course, our cockpit, pretty easy stuff here, an aluminum specialized bar, and then an aluminum specialized stem, 35 millimeter bar clamp, 31.8 millimeter bar clamp, and then out back is gonna be a change for the Evo version, where here we've got an Xfusion Manic dropper post. So it's nice to have that dropper post where it can raise by the touch of a button on the handlebar, and then of course go back down with your body weight and you're perched up on a specialized body geometry power saddle. Now this saddle is a truncated nose. You'll see it's a little bit shorter and that allows in the more aggressive position that you get on an Epic compared to a standard trail bike, a little less pressure up front. And it also gets the saddle out of the way when you're trying to move back and uh, get into that more aggressive position. Well, anyways, now that we've gotten a chance to take a look at some of the features and designs of this 2022 
specialized Epic Evo expert, it's time we find out what it weighs. The actual weight of this specialized Epic Evo expert in a size small is 25.42 pounds. Thanks so much for joining me to check out this 2022 Specialized Epic Evo Expert. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts on this bike down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as browse the channel to see more videos like this to check out as well.